What do you think guys? That should offer adequate sustenance for an unboxing video. It better, I just ate the whole box. It's Morgan Freeman here. This episode of Crack It with Retro Collectibles is sponsored by, and in conjunction with, the godfather of diecast, the mysterious but generous Glenn Cowie, and the Cowie Diecast Museum, letting expensive diecast cars breathe since 2019. About to get into the unboxing, but somebody's gonna get their butt kicked for knocking at the door so late unannounced. Glad I got my uh, banjo at the door. Wow, yeah, he's a uh, big un. Hey, uh, sir, how can I help you? Yeah, he looks like he's 80 or 90 pounds bigger than me. I don't necessarily like my chances against that, so I'll leave him alone. You guys already know, but that's actually an old picture of me wearing my green track suit before I got sick. Jacked! About 240 pounds and big muscles. So at the time, basically to make matters worse, I had my ankle doctor telling me it would benefit me to lose some weight off my frame, which it did because I started feeling right away as soon as I lost 10, 20 pounds. Um, but I was trying to lose weight at the same time as my body was robbing me of my weight because I wasn't well and I didn't know it. And I looked like a frail old man in that picture. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe. What happened was I was on Facebook today and some old pictures started coming up in memories. And I started looking at old YouTube videos and I showed Glenn one of my old ones at the apartment. And I said, wow, I look a lot bigger there in that video. And Glenn said, yeah, you could see it in your shoulders and everything. And I said, holy crap. So it's not just me. But yeah, that was... Uh, it's funny because at the height of it, Diane, I remember her saying, wow, babe, good job. You could, I could see a six pack showing and I'm like, yeah, but it's too much. Like, I don't like being this small. Like, I like having horsepower when I'm at work, right? I don't care about a six pack. Like, I had a gut. Like, I've always had a gut when I was big, but I had, you know, big chest, big arms, big back. Like, I didn't look like a little skinny six pack guy, but I was strong. And I seen that picture and I was like, oh my goodness. Anyway, let's get to the unboxing. We're going to do a classic one at Glenn's request. So this is not a Mopar this time. This is more for the Mustang guys. And I'm telling you, Shelby Collectibles, they do not skimp on details, especially under the hood. I haven't looked at this yet. As far as I know, I believe it's sealed. Um, underneath that hood, I'm expecting it to be fully plumbed and wired. Shelby Collectibles, when it comes to the under the hood stuff, always knocks it out of the park. So let's check this out. So you guys know earlier tonight we did our live. Thank you for everybody that came and thank you for everyone that's going to check it out after the fact. Um, the live, I made a boo-boo. Um, Glenn came up with a fabulous idea. Uh, what he wanted to do uh, was we're going to do this unboxing and release it. I'm going to say today for you guys, but it's actually Saturday night. You guys are in the future. Um, his idea was we were going to unbox one during the live. Uh, we were going to do it out on the patio. We're going to do the lives on the patio and weather permits. We're going to try to do the lives on Saturday evenings around 9 p.m. when everybody's settled in after dinner, the kids are in bed, what have you. And Glenn, like I said, that was an awesome idea. But what happened was we started having so much fun, I forgot. But at least we got to do it outside and at least it was a success. Anyway, here's what we're going to unbox. So at first we were going to do this. The more modern Shelby GT500 from 2013. But we just did one similar to it not long ago. The Burnout. You guys remember Burnout. For those that missed it, this is Burnham, um, our heat damaged Shelby Mustang by Shelby Collectibles. Look at that back window, eh? Still not 100% certain what happened. It spent some time in a storage locker, but the thing is, we're in Canada. It was in the storage locker, Glenn thinks, from January till about March, the end of March. 
but we did get some heat in March, so it's hard to say. It could have been too hot in the storage locker. Or he moved in the summer, and I think he moved when it was very hot. And this would have been in the moving trucks from Toronto all the way here, Scarborough. So that would have been hot, but check that out. And the puzzling thing is, why didn't it melt the plastic on the box? Why did it do the, like, why was the melting point of the windshield lower than the window plastic on the box? Things that make you go, hmm. And Glenn just said there was cars right next to it. No other cars got damaged. Just this one, just the windshield and the little, uh, below the back window, the little deck thing. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we're going to get into this classic tonight. At Glenn's request, he wanted a classic. We're going to bring him a classic. He did awesome tonight too during the live. He actually jumped on the live watching the video and was uh, interacting with viewers, which I thought was awesome in the comments. So tonight I'm going to give Glenn what he wants. Before we get into that, Glenn was just telling me about the new Durangos that are out. I was telling him before, I said, the Dodge Durangos, if I could find one that's not all rotted out for a decent price, I'd rock one. I love it. Same with the old uh, Jimmies and Blazers and stuff. The new ones, so there's a 2023, it's the SRT Durango. Um, it's on sale for just uh, just south of 100 k you can get it for 93000 right now, I believe Glenn said. Or the 2024, you can get for just over a hundred k And they both got the SRT packages. Wow. And the 24. Okay, before we get into the unboxing, guys, I just got to set up the light and everything here. Get the look-see set looking good. I turned on the set light. Uh, just while I'm getting set up, I'll show you guys how I did toy hunting this week. So this week I was waiting on those pop cultures to come in with the Muck Cuts van and stuff. I was sure they were coming to my store. G got them just out of town. They went to Barton Walmart. They were surely coming to my store. They didn't come. I seen some cool toys this week. Newer stuff come in. Look at that Logan Paul, eh? But not my pop culture cars. It wasn't a total bust, though. If your name is Justin and you're my buddy, you lucked out big time this week. He collects diecast, okay? But he started it because of me, because of the movie cars, stuff like that. He dabbles in it. He enjoys it. He let, he enjoys the chase. Like, I taught him how to find chases, and I I taught a trained sniper. Like, he you, he you that guy can beat anybody toy hunting. If you put me in a time machine two years ago when I'm at my best, uh, just nonstop, and put me against Justin, who I showed, he, he'd take me out. And I wouldn't say that about many people. I think G2 would give me a run for my money, actually. Him at his best and me at my best, he might take me out. Uh, but these are platinum chases that I got for Justin. I don't collect these. See that little patch? You ever see this in the store? Don't leave it in the store. Take it. Platinum chase by McFarlane Toys. They're the uh, DC, you know, you know who they are. I got three of them all in one swoop. And I got three before, but they were all the same character. These are three different brand new characters. They must have just got the shipment. I went in there and ironically, I went in there and I was like, oh damn, the Hot Wheels suck, blah, blah, blah. Same old stuff. I was debating checking this aisle. I always check the action figures, the wrestling figures. I was debating that day. Glad I did. The one was sitting right out front, so they must have just stalked it. And then there was one behind it. And then I said, oh, there can't be a third one. And I dug and there was a third one. And then my friend out west hits Toys R Us. After I get these, he gets inspired. He finds Batman and another guy. Two other platinum chases different from these. And he's, he's a 905 member out in BC. Okay, like we got guys everywhere. And his name is Dave. He's a, he's our other Dave. We call I call him BC Dave. Okay, 
Um, yeah, he got he got two of them and sold them to me for cost. Well, sold them to Justin for cost through me. So the next time I get a box from him, he's going to send them back. And so Justin, wherever he's at working, whatever, when he cut, because, you know, once every month or whatever, he comes and picks up toys from me. We exchange toys, whatever, because he works everywhere, right? So he can't always hunt. So I'm his hunter. So I got a pile of toys here for him and he's going to have five platinum chases to pick up when he gets back. I think he, I can't remember, I might have even got him wrestling figure chases. He has a big pile down there anyway. He's got a good pile. He's got the whole set of M2 Machines trucks, all six of them. The, that was a hot set, boy. They came once to my store and then I never got them again. Sometimes we get multiple batches and I can get a bunch, but not that time. Anyway, sorry guys for being long-winded. Let's get into her. Actually, first ever, I forgot to tell you guys. This is a first ever episode. Retro Collectibles Unboxing Crack It Under the Stars. Retro Collectibles Crack It Under the Stars is about to begin in 3, 2, 1. Retro Collectibles coming at you live from the patio at the Cowie Diecast Museum. Cut it. You gotta get at this. It's not fun. Ooh, that light is bright. That just shows you what a difference that little light makes. We're outside, it's about 1.30 a.m., so we're going to keep respectful of our neighbors, but we're going to... Ah, See the Hamilton police roll up and just crack my head in with billy clubs for being too loud? Okay, so... Hmm. This is the neighborhood it would happen in, too, because be, it's like a... Like, it's not a middle-class neighborhood, actually. It's a pretty rich neighborhood. Some people around here might think that their poop doesn't stink. I know my poop stinks. It's a retro collectibles poop stink. Okay, so once again, this is the 66 Shelby GT350, odd year. I don't think we've done a 66 yet. And this is like a tribute to Legend series. They lost Carol Shelby, an American legend, on in 2012. Wow, that long ago, eh? So anyway, guys, without further ado, I like the rims on it and the Goodyear tires. Without further ado, crack it under the stars with retro collectibles. Okay. And this has never been cracked, guys. So this is an actual, I don't bluff you guys. If it's been opened before, I tell you. If it's not been opened, I tell you. I'm honest about it. I don't lie and pretend it's, you know, never been opened and it's been opened. I don't do that. Don't have to do that. Because if you haven't seen the car, it doesn't matter if it's been opened or not. You still want to see it. I know I would, so... And we got it, we got it, that's sad. And we got it, and guess what we might do tomorrow, guys? This is a, a little bit of a surprise. It's a post decision. As we were ending the live video, I guess Giuliano reminded Glenn, or mentioned to Glenn, that there is the big Ancaster toy show tomorrow. And the reason I say big is it's big, like... Uh, if you go there right when it opens, it's a certain price to get in the door. And then up until noon, the price drops by the hour. Um, I don't usually go the first hour because that doesn't usually matter to me. Getting in right first thing. Um, but maybe tomorrow we will. I don't know. But if we go, you know you're coming with us. Um, we were originally going to go at, well, we asked G to go because we were going to go with him and get a video with the three of us. Uh, G might have his granddaughter tomorrow. Um, so, if that's the case, then that leaves us to hang out. And that's me, you guys, and Glenn to go to the show. But G said if his plans change, whatever, he's going to message in the morning. So, 
she might come with us. And we're 99% sure we're going, guys. But if Glenn gets sick, I get sick, you know, the house burns down, the dog dies, the non-existent dog, God forbid all this stuff. Um, that's a, it's actually beautiful. I love the I love the rims on it, guys. Uh, but yeah, just basically, as long as nothing catastrophic happens, we're going. Okay. And so far, so good. I'm not, I got one band off. I'm not seeing paint rash anywhere, guys. Shelby Collectibles, from my experience anyway, has been pretty good without paint rash. And the reason I say my experience is because probably there's some of you out there that have gotten them with paint rash, because I think every maker has cars like that. Even Ertl, for the longest time, I thought Ertl was batting 100 for no paint rash. Um, but then I got my Starsky and Hutch, and I've seen others with paint rash. Now, my Starsky and Hutch, you don't see it unless you look at the car very closely. Still glad I got it. Not the seller's fault, because it was sealed in the box um, when I got it. Um, but yeah, so it, it happens to all of them. It's not just one now, but the, the weird thing is some of the higher end ones, it happens more often, like ones that you pay more for that you would expect it to not be happening as much. Speaking of those higher end companies, I've got to mention one of the cars in that living room there, it's the highest rated GMP that I ever unboxed. It's my favorite one. It's the... Uh, lime green or sassafras green i can't remember what color the green is but it's the oh a mouse just ran by me i just said a swear word but a mouse i just watched a mouse run right by me i heard him on the deck and i'm out here wearing sandals i don't, I don't like that there's creatures out here like i love living out here but I'd seen a raccoon in our blue box earlier because when I'm in the kitchen, I'll hear rustling there right outside the kitchen door. And sometimes I'll look out. We have, you know, our our door, it has windows at the top so I can creep and look at the out the top and they can't see me and I can watch them. And this time I heard rustling. I assumed it was a mouse. Light was on and everything. And I tell Glenn, before you walk out at night, turn the light on and make noise because there could be something here. And uh, I didn't do it because I thought it was mouse. And I walked outside and there was a raccoon popping out of the blue box. It wasn't, a, thankfully, it wasn't a big one or anything. It looked like a baby, but who knows, the mother could be around and raccoons can get nasty. You ever see a raccoon in the daytime, stay away from them because there's something usually wrong with them if they're out in the daytime. Just... Uh, Little stubby handles, uh, the Shelby collectibles. These ones are in tight though. Now this is going to be that two-piece Shelby collectibles base. Remember I explained it before. These cars on the bases are on an angle, so they're usually on a little pedestal as well. Um, to any new viewers, if you open your cars to display them, keep your box mint, keep all the plastic inserts, keep everything. The only thing you will throw out is the straps that we cut off the car. That's it. And the reason we de-strap, because not only are we believers, but we know it happens because we have cars inside that have damage, is that over the years, plastic straps, uh, plastic's made of so many different compounds that over the years it reacts differently. I've seen it on plastic toys like uh mr t galoob the 12 inch one i had it when i was a kid i want one in the box i'm having a hard time finding one in the box from the 80s because every time i find one that's a reasonable price his head has a lighter color on the face and that like the plastic starts turning um, LJN wrestlers used to get stuff like that. We called it like the LJN cancer or whatever we called it, but 
or the Raj, or I can't remember what it was called, but if you were an LJN wrestling figure collector, you know what I'm talking about. The rubber would just turn after a while for no reason at all. Even if they were in the package, sometimes they would turn. So plastic does weird stuff, is my point, is what I'm rambling about. And so we don't leave straps on it because we know from experience it does damage. So that's one reason we unbox it. Because keeping it mint in the box don't do you no good if you're getting damage. But then again, if you sold it to another guy, I guess nobody would know unless till he opened it. Kind of like how I bought my Starsky with paint rash. That wasn't the seller's fault at all. In fact, the seller's a friend of mine. Um, he he would have told me. You know what I mean? 100%. He's a good guy. And what still I... I love the way these cars look on these bases, guys. But these bases aren't my favorite, I'll be honest. I like... I love the green light because it... It, they're made to display and put back in the box. They've got that plastic tray that slides out. I don't mean I love green light die casts over this. I love the box. Um, also love... Uh, there's a few different boxes that I like that are easy to open. I just got bit by a bug. So if we're going to be doing these in the summertime out here, anything outside, lives or anything, I think me and Glenn are going to have to get those little mosquito zapping things. Funny thing is, I had a bunch of good ones uh, not long ago at the house that we had before we got the apartment. We had patio furniture and everything all brand new and we had to get rid of it all when we moved in the apartment. The landlord... You know, we go to move in the house and I say to the guy, you're not planning on selling, right? Because everybody gets greedy now because of what's going on here. Oh no, it bought as an investment. I'm not selling it. Rental property, blah, blah, blah. Watches us deck the place. Because I told him we're going to deck it out like it's our own place. We don't plan to move. Watches us do that and then turns around and says he's selling it. And then we got approved to buy it. And then he turned around and pulled a shaster move there and said he wanted 50 grand more. I was like, nope, you just killed the deal. 300,000 is enough for this house. In fact, it was too much. I was on the fence about that. So another 50 killed it. Anyway, we'll start at the trunk. The paint is perfect and gorgeous, guys. The stripe and everything, just gorgeous. Oh, we still got other straps holding the trunk down. I was going to say, let's start on the trunk. Tip for these straps and bands, guys, when you can do it, do it from underneath the car. Uh, where you can't notice anything. That way, in case you do miss, or do it on a piece of chrome, like do it somewhere where it's not going to hurt the paint is my point. Okay, instead of yanking that, I'll open the trunk to get it out. Oh, nice trunk. It's got a spare. Now, obviously, this is not a vintage race car. This is a road legal car. It's got the spare with that rim. I am liking those rims, guys. I really like the rims. Now, I'm not a Mustang guy. I'm a Dodge guy. So don't rip my head off if they've got one less spoke than they're supposed to. Okay? Okay? Just teasing, guys. But no, seriously, I'm not a Mustang guy. I like the way this sits, though. I can't say I'm not a Mustang guy. I love Bullet and I love Eleanor. But I like the way it sits. I love the wheels on it, guys. Wow, I just... It looks real. Like, the tires and everything, the way it sits. Okay, so we're saving the best for last. Which is, you know where it's at, under the hood. And don't think we're not going to use the look-see set for those different lighting conditions. We got to, guys. We got to, or else we're not going to see every angle. There's the door. It's got the two-tone door, the nice chrome accents, like in those. You know I love the chrome accents. That's why Morgan Freeman is so mad, right? Because he doesn't like chrome inlay on the doors and stuff. So he's, he's about ready to sue me. Because he wouldn't do an intro for our show anyway. We're only got a thousand. Who do we think we are? We only got a thousand subs. Morgan Freeman's doing a... Per yeah, okay. 
he, he's going to sue us over this store here. I'm telling you. He doesn't like the, the silver on it. Never has. I gotta get rid of, that's ridiculous. I got to get rid of that thing. Ridiculous. Look ridiculous. Get rid of that ridiculous thing on my face. Yeah. But as you can expect from Shelby Collectibles, guys, but it's got the seat belts too. Uh, the seats do move a little bit. That seat was up. I just fixed it. Uh, no, I saved the best for last, which is these rims. No, just kidding. I do love the look of those guys. I haven't looked under the hood yet, obviously, because you guys see me. Never opened it. I'm betting plumbed and wired every Shelby Collectibles knocks it out of the park. Let's see if I'm right. I won't even look yet. I'm wondering. I'm hoping you guys can see it. I'm just going to... Yeah, I think you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. I can't really see it, but you can. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. And I was right, guys. Plumbed and wired. Look at that. Oh, and it's got the chrome, uh, like a fancy. Oh, that's killer. That is killer. You don't usually, like, it doesn't look stock. It looks like, uh, you know, like an engine dress-up kit a little bit. Like the auto art bullet has that, but it's not raised. You know what I mean? Like that looks a bit raised. It's supposed to be like that, I think, because it's got the hood scoop here. But that is gorgeous. Look at that, guys. Even the cross members painted. We're going to get a better look on that look-see set, though. Look at that grill. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, so far, guys, if you're a must... By the way, by the way, a viewer... you learn something new every day. A viewer pointed something out. I don't know if that viewer is watching. If you are, thank you for pointing it out. He's got a sharp eye, this guy. You know the blue Shelby? So I don't know much about new Shelbys or old ones. I tell you guys that all the, I kind of learn as I go, whatever. Um, the old ones, though, I know more than the new ones, right? That blue one that had the heat damage, somebody in the comments says to me, that Shelby logo is distracting. Isn't it supposed to be in the middle? It's on the side of the grill. And I thought, maybe he's wrong, because Shelby Collectibles is pretty on the money with this stuff, right? They don't make that mistake. I googled it, and every version of that car I found, that, that viewer commenter was right. Um, if you're watching, I don't remember your name, but you were right, because I checked. And good on you, because you taught me something and pointed something out. Um, this doesn't have anything on the grill. It looks like it's obviously, maybe it's a custom Eleanor, I don't know. But, um, or not Eleanor Mustang. But yeah, now, my first thought was maybe the heat kind of melted the glue and it was sitting on the side in the box and it kind of slid down the grill. But no, it looks like it's affixed there. So if it's affixed there, that means they made a mistake. But I'm going to research and look up other ones done by Shelby Collectibles, the exact same car, and see where that Cobra is sitting. But I was shocked. I was shocked when I saw that because usually they're pretty good. So viewer, if you're watching this, and I think you might be because you like Shelby's, you were right, my friend. And thank you for teaching me. This is, guys, normally I don't like the white color and that, but just something about this. And the blue stripes, and it's it just pops. I like the way it's gonna sit too. But we're gonna we're gonna look at that on the look see set. But even the tires are uh, realistic. Hey, well, what are you waiting for, Morgan Freeman to sue you? Let's get in there now. So even if it is an episode of Retro Collectibles, crack it under the stars. It wouldn't be an episode of Retro Collectibles Crack It without the look see set. They executed this so well, guys. White is not normally my favorite color, but there's just something about this one with those wheels and tires and rims and just the way it sits. It just looks awesome. Look at that grill. Just looks realistic, doesn't it? And this is why we came up with the Retro Collectibles look-see set, guys, for those different lighting conditions. 
and different angles, stuff that you wouldn't normally see. We could look at it from all different angles. We got a turntable set up. I left the Shelby pictures up just as a, just as a, oh, that looks like the same car almost, almost as that. Car in Glenn's picture is a GT350 as well, but I like the rims on his model here better. Look at that interior, guys. Look at the dash. Look at the shifter. The seats look like leather seats. Um, they got the creases in them. They are molded plastic, but look at the detailing they put in them to make it look real. They got those window cranks. I love the Speedos. Look at the door. Two-tone to make her pop. And if I didn't show, seat belts. Those tires, guys, and the, I, I just can't stop looking at them. The paint is flawless. Doors, hood, everything opens nice. Beautiful, beautifully done. And I just noticed something, guys. Maybe it wasn't the black one that we... Because I heard them, Dave and Glenn, saying one of them was missing a wiper. It's actually this one. And this was sealed in the box. So I'm going to give the box a shake, see if the wiper is in there. Because if it is, we're in business. If not, there's going to be a Maisto that's less a wiper. And there's that Shelby on the side of the grill. wonder if it's supposed to be there. Shelby collectibles. That's the uh, Shelby logo or the Mustang, whatever it is, in the center of the grill on this Shelby here. And this is a different car with the logo on the side like that. What the heck is going on, Shelby collectibles? I'm going to check on the internet and see if they're all like that. The real ones. Looks beautiful. Anyway, that just caught my eye. So we're going under here. Look at that motor, guys. Look at that engine. That is, like, it looks like they hopped it up, you know what I mean? Old school style. That looks, that's amazing. That looks great. The gold color parts to really set it off. That is gorgeous. Wow. Heading around to the American side of this beauty. We're going to have a look in the passenger side across. Like I said, guys, we go for those different angles and the different lighting conditions. Look at that. Tack on the dashboard. Never noticed that till now. Very nice. See the radio, everything. Wow. One last look at this beautiful car, guys. It is different looking than the one in the picture. The one in the picture doesn't have the side vents. It's got different paint on the hood, but very similar. It's got the hood scoop and everything. Um, but this is a beauty. Well, well done. Retromaniacs, thank you so much for tuning in to the first ever crack it under the stars live at the cowie diecast museum well live to me it'll be recorded to you guys but we did have a live earlier tonight i did look up because i like giving you guys the facts i did look up 1966 shelby gt350 the first thing that came up was a shelby gt350 h and it had the logo on the side like the model and I said, but the model's not in H. So I actually looked it up. And everyone that I found online, almost everyone, the logo was on the side of the grill. Good job, Shelby Collectibles. That one there, you got it right. The black one, I still want to know if it came from the factory on the side of the grill like that, because it is wrong. The way it is on that black one, the modern one, or if it somehow melted and kind of, I don't know. I'm going to look into that anyway. Anyway, guys, once again, thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button. And subscribe if you haven't, please. Share with your buddies. Come on, you know you want to.
And as always, guys, happy hunting.